Now, GasSafe have produced Technical Bulletin 118A, which is here to basically assist gas engineers on carrying out safe to touch and the safe isolation procedure. Technical Bulletin 118A was first issued on the 1st of February 2023 and this latest version was reviewed on the 1st of February 2025. The guidance in this technical bulletin should be applied to premises supplied with low voltage in a single phase provision, i.e. a domestic property. So the first part of the safe isolation safe to touch test is to actually ask the responsible person if it's okay to turn the power supply off because it could actually be feeding things like life support machines and things so always check with a responsible person that you're able to isolate the power now what about the test equipment we need well socket and see seems to have us completely covered with all the test equipment we could ever need when we're carrying out this safe isolation, safe to touch test. So let's have a look at these first. Now we're going to be needing a non-contact live circuit detector, commonly known as a volt stick. And all the test equipment must comply and manufacture to BSEN 61010 31 or BSEN 615572 or BSEN 61243 part 3 and they have to be able to go down to as low as 50 volts from a thousand volts. We're also going to need a two pole tester. Now the health and safety executives say Gas engineers are not allowed to use a multimeter. We have to be able to prove it's a dead supply. So we have to use something which is automatic, like this socket and see two pole tester. We will also require some way of proving that the two pole tester is working. So we need a way of testing a known supply and socket and see have us covered with this proving unit. This proving unit just doesn't prove our two pole tester. It also proves the non-contact voltage indicator. We also require some way of locking off our supply and socket and see have us covered in all applications. So, if we need to lock off a plug, we've got this one. If we need to lock off a few spur, we have this. And if we need to lock off the MCB, we have one of these. So, we are completely covered at locking off all supplies. Now, polarity, continuity, earth loop impedance, checking RCDs and all the rest of it are not included in technical bulletin 118A. But socket and C have us covered with all those applications. And I like to use this, especially if a boiler is plugged in to a socket, to make sure that we have got the right polarity and earth loop impedance. Now the first test we're going to be doing is the safe to touch test. So I'm going to be using my non-contact voltage indicator to make sure we have got no stray voltage on the boiler or the pipe work. Now you can see this boiler is fed with a plug top, but it's also fed with a switched socket. Now, technically, a boiler cannot be fed with a switch socket because you don't know whether that switch is double pole or not. So you don't know whether it's switching the live and the neutral off. So that's why it must be an unswitched socket because the only way you're gonna turn it off is by pulling the plug out. So we can actually use this to prove the supply here so we can test this. So all we need to do is plug it in, switch it on. 
we should get three green lights here, which we have to show that it's wired correctly. So our live neutral and earth are in the right location. And the green light here showing our earth loop impedance test has passed. So now we know this is a known supply. We can turn it on into our live. We're now testing it and we now know this is working. Now socket and C do have our proving unit and we can do this as well with this by pressing in this button and we can go to the little pad. So if you haven't got one of them you can test it at a known supply a socket. Now we have to test the boiler so we're sweeping around the boiler it's plastic front cover we're going around the pipe work Remember it's non-contact so you're just sweeping around checking to see if you're putting it, picking any voltage up. Once you've tested it then you go back to the same supply to make sure this is still working or the pad. Now what do you do if during the test the non-contact voltage indicator actually indicates a live supply? Well, as a gas engineer, you must stop the test immediately and get in touch with the responsible person who will need to contact an electrician to verify what the fault is. Because as a gas engineer, you cannot verify electrical faults. So that's the first one over. We've tested, it's now safe to touch. Now, in the next part of the process of Gas Safe Technical Bulletin 118A is locking off the supply that is feeding the appliance. And Socket and C have got us covered with these three different ways of locking off the supplies. Now, this boiler is fed with a plug top, so we're going to look at this one first. Now, some of you out there will be going, why do we need a lock off kit if it's on a plug top when we can just remove the fuse or we can cut the plug off? Now, well, if the socket is right next to the boiler and you can see it all times, then removing the fuse out of the plug top should should be good enough but what if the plug socket is on the other side of the room removing the fuse then might cause us problems because somebody might put the fuse back in plug it in and turn it on without you knowing it so for your safety it's always best to lock off the supply. So the socket and C plug locking off kit is quite simple. So there is a three number code here. This is set to zero. If you want to change this code, you just press this down to this way and then you can adjust the numbers. We're gonna leave it on zero. So what we have to do is plug the plug in then we screw this down to stop the plug being removed and to stop this being turned back up to remove the plug we need to lock it off so we put it in line like that we then add the label we then push this down, we then adjust the numbers, this now won't pull up and the plug won't pull out and nobody can twist it out so we know this is completely secure and again I'll probably get people in the comments will say cut the plug off and rewire it, really is somebody going to do that when they see that? So for peace of mind and for your safety, always make sure you lock off the supply. So, the next one we're going to look at is locking off a fuse spur. Two different types of fuse spur 
and this is the fuse spur lock off kit works, works the same as all the others when you set in the codes and everything so down like that set your codes whatever you want and then spin it around drop it in move your numbers so like we just done up there so again if we've got the horizontal one this just goes onto here screw down this plastic screw put on your label move it in line push it down move your numbers like we did before and can't be removed can't be pushed in so that's that one on the vertical one same process this goes through the center like that again move it in line push it in it can't be removed it's as simple as that now this is the mcb lock off kit this is actually set to zero if you want to change it you press that down there and then you can move the numbers so if we move it to one that's now changed to one so what we need to do is you line these up put that in move the numbers so we'll move them to two that's now locked so if we move them back to one that's now unlocked so what we do is it also comes with this do not operate sign so we can put the sign through there turn off the mcb you screw that down like that make sure this is in line turn it in line press that down move the numbers and this now cannot be turned or removed now we're ready to take the cover off the boiler now this isn't in technical bulletin 118a but this is what i personally do before i touch the boiler i like to just touch it with the back of my hand because if i grabbed hold of it i could either stick to it or get blown off it that has happened to me in the past anyway two screws are undone on here take the cover off and i can now Drop the flap of the boiler and expose the electrics without touching them because I can't touch them until I've tested that they are completely dead. So what equipment are we going to be using for that? So we're going to be using our socket and C two pole tester. Before we actually use this though we need to inspect and make sure it's working. So we need to check the leads to make sure there's no nicks and breaks in them and they're in good condition. Now, according to the Health and Safety Executive GS38, our exposed probes need to be no more than four millimeters, but they'd like them to be three millimeters. Just pick one. Anyway, we seem to be within that, but we need to make sure it's working. So if I touch these two together, you can see it makes a buzzing noise and the light comes on. Is that telling me it's working? Well, no, it's telling me the battery's working and we've got continuity and the leads are connected. Socket and C do have this auto tester on this, so when I press that in, is that testing it's working? Well, again, according to 118A, no, we really need to prove it on a known supply. And Socket and C get us covered with this, our proving unit. So, how are we going to use the proving unit? How does this proving unit work then? So basically we take this lead and we press it onto here and we take this onto here and we gently press it down and this will now simulate up to 690 volts AC 
and you can see this is now simulated that it's working i do believe this is one of the few testers that actually does simulate up to 690 volts ac now even if you have this carrying case for the socket and see the holes in the bag actually line up so you don't have to take this out of the carrying case if you've got this carrying case. Now it's finally time to actually do the safe isolation test or the dead test. So the non-contact voltage indicator test or the safe to touch test doesn't prove it's dead, it proves it's not alive. This test is to prove that it's completely dead. Now, like I said before, even though I've removed the plug, doesn't automatically assume that this is completely isolated from the supply. Now, one of the problems we've got because we are fed via the plug is, do you think we actually have an earth? Because we're gonna be doing the testing on the earth wire. Now, what I do is I get my little probe and I stick it on the screw, here is the plug, go onto the earth, and if we get a buzzing, we get continuity. That means our earth wire is connected to an earth. So where's this earth coming from? Well, it's coming from either the water supply or the gas supply because they require to be earthed. So we can now safely do our test from our earth connection. So now we can carry out the test. We need to go from earth to line or live. So we've got nothing there and we need to go from earth to neutral we've got nothing there we need to come off the earth onto the neutral and then back onto line sometimes you'll get continuity but we've got nothing there back off again back onto the earth and then test the actual wires coming back from the controls now, can we stick our fingers in there? No, because we've now got to go and prove this again on the same supply or proving unit. Let's prove it works through the bag. There you go, it's still working. So we can assume we've carried out safe isolation. So that is our look at the safe isolation procedure to Gas Safe Technical Bulletin 118A with the test equipment supplied by Socket and C. Hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.